I'm with Edwin Week, and it's been about a month since I was here when you had just received some tigers uh, from up in the northeast, and you had a t you had two there that were very sick on, upon arrival. How are they all getting on? Well, you know, we are now uh, five weeks after arrival of these uh, tigers and leopards, and um, they're all doing quite okay. I mean, uh, the skinny ones are still needing a little bit more care, a little bit more time to actually recover. Um, their system, you know, their, their digestive system is not really up to date yet, but they're gaining weight. The leopards are doing extremely good, actually much better than expected. Together, all three of them in one large enclosure that, that we'll have a look at later on. Um, but overall, I say that uh, the tigers are doing well. They're out in the open. Uh, we're putting them together in groups now so they can actually uh, live a much more close to nature kind of life where they can show natural kind of behavior. Um, it's going to take a bit more time, um, but I'm confident that uh, in, in, a, in a short while actually uh, we'll see healthy tigers running around, even those ones that are a bit older, because some of them are really old, over 20 years yeah. old. Mm -hmm. uh, we still hope to give them uh, a good life for an did, extra few years. Did some of them uh, have difficulty uh, making the transit from a concrete cage to the open? Yeah, you would, you would think that any animal would be happy to see grass and soil mm. under their feet instead of cement, but uh, actually with some of the tigers it's taken up to two to two and a half weeks before they finally went outside. So what are the long term, the longer term prospects for them? Well, um, releasing tigers back to the wild is just not possible, especially not for tigers that were actually raised in farms that are hybrids, not uh, of the Indo-Chinese uh, subspecies that we find in the wild in Thailand. So um, the best thing we can do is give them a life as close to nature as possible yeah. in small groups so they can actually interact with each other and show natural behavior. That's what we're trying to do. We're going to get a few more tigers coming, maybe up to 10 tigers more and a few leopards more. Uh, we're getting ready for that. We're going to show you today um, what we're building, what it's going to look like. Um, yeah, and then actually we've got to see if we can somehow get them to a proper health, happy, healthy life for yeah. them to come. So you, you've got a new visitors a gallery, I guess you could call it, and a restaurant. <laughs> yeah. we it's can called, see it's, it's basically it's basically the new viewpoint. Um, I like to call this place the Stripes, yeah, the Stripes with the Tigers, and That's I think we're going to call probably the Stripes uh, Coffee Shop or the Stripes Viewpoint. Actually, you have an almost 270 degree panorama view of the tiger enclosures away from the tigers. You cannot get close to them. There will be a small fence here between uh, our viewpoint and the fencing of the tigers on yeah. both sides. But up here we have a place where you can get uh, some drinks, nice coffee, actually Illy coffee that we actually serve here. It is here. good. Yeah, I yep. just tried it. It's yep. great. It's a great coffee and uh, we got some nice uh, shakes and drinks, even a glass of wine. Uh, lunch will be served over here with the kitchen on the other side. Uh, at the viewpoint over there, there will be some lower tables here for those people that don't want to sit on the high chairs over there and over there. Uh, and actually from here, starting from the second week of February, you can just walk in come for a cup of coffee or a lunch and, and view the tigers from a distance. You, there's no interaction with the tigers, of course. There's not going to be any walking around like in a zoo. But if you're, for example, living in Hua Hin and you visited the Wildlife Rescue Center in the past and you think by yourself, well, I got some friends from abroad, some family that are visiting us. I want to go have a, li a little bit of look, a little bit of a teaser. Then you can come here for lunch or in the afternoon for a, a little snack or a cup of coffee and enjoy the view seeing tigers in, you know, semi-wild enclosures. Well, it's my first time to this spot, really, and what I found is that it's very close to the main road as well, which is a huge advantage. Yeah, the, currently it's still a dirt road, but um, in the next two, three weeks, we're also going to cement that. Unfortunately, the government is very slow with infrastructure in this country sometimes, so we'll have to do it ourselves. Yeah. But yes, in a couple of weeks' time, even your car washed and everything, polished, you can still come in and come out clean. <laughs> yes. Tom Taylor manages the daily care of the animals. I asked him how he thought the animals were settling into their new home. Are fine. They're settling in really, really well. We've got two of them out in the big enclosure here. Okay. Today. They are over there somewhere. They are over there somewhere. Uh, and then all, all the other guys are housed in the large enclosures over there. So okay. we, we, we can't immediately see them right now. No. Uh, but they're all amazingly well, actually, surprising what they've gone through in the past. Uh, because most, most of, them, of them have been living in a concrete 
home, right? Correct. Yeah. yeah. They, they all came from what four by four concrete uh, pits, basically, where they'd been under a roof, so they hadn't even seen the sky. They had no sunlight. They were fed a very, very bad diet. Uh, uh, and since being here, they're 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 experiencing everything new. Even even the grass or the lakes that they're going in, even the ability to scratch on wood and things like that, they never had before. Uh, along with all the love that they're getting from us and the, the staff and the keepers here. So we can see them all coming out of the shells now. The, the, the fear behaviours are going away and they're becoming confident and getting used to the new routines of just being able to do what they want and, and, and move about in the wonderful open spaces we have here. Yeah, it was really encouraging to see a couple of them just playing just now with each other. <laughs> and I noticed that, in fact, if we look over here, you see in the distance there's a little red ball by the water. Yeah. And are they playing with that? Don't they think? love, I don't know if, if any of you may have seen, it, it went a little bit viral. One of our younger males, Maraway, yeah. is very possessive of his ball and he holds it like <laughs> this and floats in the water. Uh, they love the balls. It's amazing. It's such a simple thing, uh, but sadly quite expensive. These they are made in Australia. They're tiger-proof balls that are made for tigers and made by a company called Aussie Dog Toy in Australia. <laughs> and they retail at about four hundred dollars each. Really? Yes. That's so it's serious. not. It's it's a treat. It's not something we can afford for every single animal here. Oh. So so I think we've got four, and we rotate them around the enclosure. So they they like shared toys. So you've got different enclosures. They're quite sizable. Um, but how many tigers do you keep in each, or do you, or are they all together? No, no, no. We have to separate them. They, they can't all live together. They're they're a solitary species in the wild. All of them, bar two or three, have been kept in solitary confinement their whole lives. Uh, so we're, we're we're slowly integrating. Our biggest group is three, uh, and then we have quite a few pairs. Uh, uh, and and we we that's the ideal. So they'll live in pairs or in trios. And what about the longer term uh, chances of their survival and things? Are they going to be living here pretty yeah, yeah. Well, well, per we, permanently? We, or? Of course, of course, we, we provide life's long sanctuary for them. Uh, none of them are, are purebred Thai tigers, Indo Chinese tigers. They're all hybrids or Bengal tigers, which yeah. aren't even native to Thailand. So the idea of uh, wasting money and time re uh, re rehabilitating these guys to go back to the wild doesn't make any sense at all. Sure. Uh, so they're here for, for life long sanctuary. We prevent them from breeding uh, and then we feed them with the proper diet. Uh, there's one climbing on a platform right now. Oh, you yeah. see there? Yeah. Just, just over there. Oh, and she's calling. Oh, right. I don't think I can zoom into that. Can you I? can hear her, maybe. I can hear it. Which is try a zoom. Oh, she sat down now. There we go. No, I can't. No, I can't Relax. really see it. So, so you yeah. see they have wonderful areas where they live. They have platforms. They can get up high. They can basically do what they want. Okay. And that, 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 that's the ideal for them, to, to provide them with a, 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 an excellent quality of life within captivity in a sanctuary. So very quickly, what are your staff actually doing? And how does their, get, how does their day go now you've got these new... I'm going to call them residents. Mm. Residents, there we go. Not there guests, go. residents, yeah. Um, a little bit busier yeah. for all of us, but particularly the, the, the keepers. We've got five guys working full time now, taking care of the big cats. So they're up at, at 6.30 in the morning, checking all the enclosures, making sure everything's in one piece, uh, uh, and then basically cleaning and feeding and doing lots of maintenance throughout the day. Uh, they get fed at the end of the day, so the tigers are all, and the leopards are fed, right. are all fed once a day at the end of the day. Right. How uh, much do they eat? Oh, a lot, right? Wow, yeah. On average, it's about four, I would say four kilos of meat per day per cat. Yeah, some of them are a little bit fat, our previous yeah. ones, so we give them three kilos. Some of them are quite thin, so they get maybe five or six kilos, but it's, it's in between four and, and six kilos. That's a huge amount of food that has to be purchased. Well, yes. Where do you actually get the food from? And I mean, you can't get it in Tesco. No, we, 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 well, <laughs> kind of. It's, it's, it's a human meat supplier we get it from, it, based in Petbury. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. so they supply to shops and restaurants and things like that, and it's it's a wholesale, okay. uh, but it's not cheap. No, I bet it no, isn't. It's not cheap. Okay, is there anything else I should know? Well, no, I mean... we, we we in the, in in the coming weeks we're going to be taking more big cats in. Yeah. Yeah, we're not sure of the number yet, uh, but there are still quite a few left at the farm where they're being rescued from. Uh, so we're, we're, we're gonna take maybe maybe five more, uh, and that'll bring the total to 20 right. uh, from the place where, where they were all kept in 
horrible deplorable conditions you can yeah. maybe hear the construction or see it in the background yes. we're speed building some more enclosures so we can take more in and that's so. going to be happening in the next few weeks and that'll really fill you up i guess oh definitely yeah, yeah. yeah for now anyway <laughs> so thank you very much it's been that's great okay. yeah a pleasure as always